プロがやるっていうのはやっぱ攻撃をすることだと思うんですね自分が勝つために何をすればいいかやっぱりそのこっちの気持ちの方があるんで気持ちでも絶対もうそのクマとかトラとかライオンとかとやってるわけじゃない同じ人間とやってるので絶対どっかに弱点はあの同じもう体重は違っても同じ人間じゃないですかどっかに弱いところはあると思うんですごいでかいやつでもそこはみんな選手が思ってたと思いますのでみんなお客さんに響いたと思いますけど。At its apex, pride fighting championships rivaled professional sports leagues here in North America. It was huge. 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, up to 71,000 at the Tokyo Dome. So Pride FC was number one with a bullet. Wow, they did it right. They spent a lot of money to put on a show. Huge screens everywhere, very Japan, Tokyo, like 10 years ahead of us in technology. Always pyro, always like a wall of lights. It was a big TV screen. It was flexible and it was floor to ceiling. The guy who runs it comes out in his sumo outfit and just starts hitting this gong and this drum, doom, doom, doom. And they have the music, doom, 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 doom. You just get chills, you know, you're like your, your hair starts standing up. Lady screams your name, and who I thought was Japanese turned out to be white as can be. From the entrance to the action to the post fight celebration, it was like the Super Bowl meets WrestleMania meets the biggest rock and roll act ever. And Kazushi Sakuraba was a bona fide rock star in Japan. Pride really wanted to bring out Bushido, the way of the warrior. Pretty much everything is allowed in fighting, so we know who's the toughest samurai in Pride. Kazushi Sakuraba embodied Bushido, the way of the warrior. He wanted the great challenges. He wanted to prove that he was a giant inside, maybe not the most physically impressive body. You see a certain fighter. You can tell that's a fighter. But Sakuraba, he looks absolutely not the part of being this badass fighter that he really is. Sakuraba was totally against the grain in every way, shape, and form. He came from the world of professional wrestling, and if you see him in action, win or lose, he always entertained. To kawaii te o プロレスプロレスって面白いしやっぱむず難しいしそういうのいろんな勉強になりましたあのやっぱりお客さんが入らなければ僕らの給料にはならないしど,どういうふうにお客さんを入れるかっていうのをすごい僕の先輩とかもそういうのを見てたので僕は確かプレート2から。Three guys walk in, they all have the same body build. Nobody really knows who Sakuraba is, and at the last possible moment, one takes the head off, and that is Sakuraba. Now, we always had those gimmicks, but he came up with, and the people, of course, loved. Just watching him enter the, the, the ring was worth the price of admission alone. Yeah, 
ケビン・ランデルマン選手が、えー、っと日本世界で言うんですかね日本で日本であのドンキーコングっていうすごいジャンプキンドンキーコングあのゲームのドンキーコングって言われてたんでーゲーム的に考えたらこれドンキーコング倒すのはマリオしかいねえやと思ってでその勝つつもりでマリオの格好をしましたサカラーバは、like、ミカルクリーチャーで、really、すごく歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な人たちの歴史的な That people never expect that suddenly when you see it, he was pulling a rabbit out of the hat. I think that's why I'm going to be able to get the people 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 to get the 僕はもう真面目なことやるのがダメなんですよねダメだからもうわざとふざけてるんですけどねその真面目な空間がちょっときついんで Part of Kazushi Sakuraba's legacy was his courage under fire facing some of the biggest opponents a man his size could ever face Here was an athlete who was 180 pounds who was being fed legitimate monsters guys who outweighed him up to 60 pounds Oh, he's gonna throw him out of the ring! Oh, no, 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 no. Two times a year, I don't know. So, in that sense, I don't know if it's a big thing to do with a big thing. It's a great heart out there. He's giving everything he's got. He's got a big Oh, he got the choke. It's over. Choke, it's over! It's over! The Kusi Sakuraba has choked out the wild man. I think Sakuraba, for him, there is no fear, no whatsoever. To buy a loaf of bread or to go to a fight is about the same thing. たまたまそのできたと思うんですけどやっぱり格闘技って面白いのは小さいやつが大きいやつを倒す,倒すのが面白いと思うんですよ。でお客さんがボーン盛り上がるとそのまま天井から跳ね返って自分の方に声も聞こえてくるんですよ。であこれ盛り上がってるとか盛り上がったらやっぱりもっと盛り上げなきゃいけないっていう気持ちもありますし。You need to really show a reaction so you connect with the top row, the nosebleed section. I believe that was part of Sakuraba's method. He wanted to connect with everybody in that arena. Uh oh, that's trouble. He's got it. He's got it. But what he really built his name on was becoming the first ever fighter to fight four members of the legendary Gracie family. There's just so much history with Japanese Jiu Jitsu versus Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Japanese Jiu Jitsu is where it all originated from. What happened was a Gracie from Brazil was taught Japanese Jiu Jitsu, and then the Gracies made it their own Gracie Jiu Jitsu, and it's become Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Nobody could beat the Gracies. I mean, they were so big, it was unheard of at the time. Hoyler Gracie, he took him out, camored him. This is not good for Hoyler. Oh my God. Gracie, the UFC champ, came to, to Pride Japan, or the Mecca is, to face Sakuraba. The first Grand Prix that Pride put on, it was an eight-man tournament in one night. You have to win three fights in order to win the whole thing. Sakuraba is by far the fan favorite, the Japanese superstar hero. And Boyce Gracie was a big part of the Pride Grand Prix. His name in there alone blew it up even higher. I like it. 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 I like
つらいかもしれないですけど僕は楽しいですけど No, no message to Sakuraba. I'll give my message on May 1st. あの時はですねあの一応トーナメントっていう話だったんでトーナメントって言ったら大体もうルールほぼほぼだから一緒じゃないですか一緒なのに Gracie said I don't want to do on the time limit We Jiu Jitsu guys we need to find our way our groove so there was 15 minute rounds unlimited until somebody would stop give up get submitted or knocked out ホイスだけグラグラグラグラ行ってきたんですよ無制限ってなんかイラッときたんでいや別にじゃあ無制限でやってもいいよ構わないよその代わりじゃあもうおむつつ,おむつ,つけて便所行く時間なんかないからねっていう意味を込めておむつつけてやりました勝手にあのルール変えたんで僕もじゃあこれ俺もルール変更していいこれはもうじゃあファイトマネー総取りあの勝った方が総取りでいいですかっつったらホイツがマジ切れしてましたね OK guys this is it a fight of the century this is the fight of the century it really is Here we go. Hoist goes right after him. Sakuraba goes for the single, and down they go. I don't know. So the manager, no, 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 で、あとかあってか途中の途中で気づいたんですけどなかなか脱げないですよこれ脱げないし下もずれないですよでチェック何気にこう組んでる時見たら道着をテーピングで巻いてるんですよねあ道着じゃなくてひあの紐ベルトあのテープで止められた帯だけはもうイラッときましたねあれがなければ絶対脱がせられたと思うんですよね脱,い脱がしたら脱がしたら絶対面白いと思うしあとはあの本当に思ったのは肩脱がしてこ,ここで止めるんですよここで後ろでこう止めて手をこうやってストップさせてそこからガーッて殴ってやろうかなと思ったんですけど。That was the first time that you saw Sakuraba using the gi that Boyce was wearing against him. He was pulling it over his head and they started kneeing him. He was laying on the ground, he was sitting in his guard. He would go underneath and he would grab the gi and he'd lift him up and then he'd just start hitting him in the face in between his legs. I'm the next fight. So I'm back in my dressing room getting warmed up. But at the same time, I realized this could go on forever, which it kind of did. I got to figure out when I should start really getting warmed up. Well, another 15 minute round, another one. I started getting really frustrated back there because it just went on. It went on and on and on. And、uh, how many times am I going to warm up? Next thing you know, it went an hour and a half. Fighting for 90 minutes, I couldn't imagine how much water you're losing and how much your technique is going out the window. After 90 minutes, you know, Hoist's dad said, hey, that's enough. Throw in the towel. 正直その時はあと2ラウンドやったら俺もうダメかなと思いましたねそういうのは記憶にありますね。It was huge to see Sakuraba become the new toughest man on the planet。Enzo Gracie、Gracie came in wanting to avenge the family。Henzo Gracie was much more aggressive than Hoyler and Hoist. Always smiling, very charismatic, incredibly technically gifted. This is the fight of the century. We've been waiting for this. People around the world have been waiting for this fight. Don't blink on this one. Good right hand by Sakuraba. Side kick and punch over the top. Nice low kick. Sakuraba tries to shoot, and a knee and a right hand by Henzo Gracie. Oh! As he was losing his balance, he hit the ropes and he fell in my half guard. And at that moment that we were spinning, I felt my arm coming out. And we landed, it was already out. My whole life, I trained myself and I tried to build a mindset that if one day I got caught in a submission, I wouldn't quit. With Sakuraba, it was the first time 
that I could test that. Nobody was ever good enough to be able to do it. Then mm. the next thing I see, the kimura is on. And I remember thinking, there's no quitting now. There's no way you're gonna tap. This particular kimura, nobody ever used before. It was like, it was difficult to find leverage from there. And he was able to develop a strength and a, a positioning so well from that position that he made very efficient. <laughs> Many people make excuses when they lose. I have only one. He was better than me tonight. The only gift that I can give to him is say that he's the Japanese version of the Gracie family. Beating his third member of the Gracie family, that's when Pride Fighting Championships caught fire. And so that Kimura was one of the most memorable and most important submissions in MMA history. If you want to become a fighter, there's no better school for you to learn than looking into this man's life and learning from the way that he trained, the way that he fought, the heart that he had. That was exactly like a Gracie. I say, in my head, this is the Japanese version of the Gracie family. After defeating Henzo, he also defeated the inimitable High and Gracie, earning the moniker the Gracie Hunter. Sakuraba was the Gracie Hunter. You know, we could imagine this guy like a Godzilla going through Brazil and taking out Gracies. Sakuraba was huge for Japan, huge for MMA to just take out all those Brazilian guys out there. <laughs> Pride was very successful, but for them to do and spend as much money as they did to make this super production show, the money had to come from somewhere. Somebody had to be backing this whole outfit. You would wonder, you know, well, how did they put on such a beautiful production like this? When you're getting paid in like these, you know, Japanese envelopes with stack of US money cash, you're just like, well, who's paying us? What's, what's going on here? It was always a thought or a rumor that they were backed by two different Yakuza groups. I'm like, Yakuza, what is that? You know, you know Japanese gangster. I didn't know what Yakuza was. Japanese Mafia loves mixed martial arts. You know, they love gambling on it. They love uh, putting on these events. You see some guys at these events, Japanese dudes with tattoos, really meant something significant. If you're walking around with tattoos in Japan, back then you were a gangster, you were a Yakuza, you know? And we definitely saw some of those guys sitting in the front row. We'd always be looking at their hands to see if there was a finger missing. I never seen one, but they told me to look. Pride Fighting Championships had a great uh, relationship with Fuji TV. They were getting a lot of money from them. When people found out that there was a connection with the Yakuza, people didn't want to tune in anymore. That's the Japanese audience. That they just don't want to be involved with that. They lost immediately the, the Fuji TV deal. Fuji TV, they had to step away, clean their hands, and uh, they started falling fast. All the rumors are circulating that Pride's in a lot of trouble financially. But the bosses assured me they're fine. But as it turns out, they weren't fine. It was the end of a beautiful era. The transition happened from Pride being the best in the world. The UFC became the best organization in the world, the strongest organization in the world. When I think back about Pride, I only think about good things. These guys pulled out all the stops. Japanese boom was the 
まあそこに参加できてよかったなと思ってるし Pride was just on fire for a while and it was the biggest organization in the world I mean that's where you want it to be Sakuraba made Pride I think without Sakuraba Pride wouldn't have existed The emotions that come with Sakuraba you see people crying they're literally crying when he loses crying when he wins He was such a lionized figure, and the reason for that, regardless if he was winning or losing, he was always putting on a show and helped Pride become one of the preeminent organizations the sport has ever seen. Kazushi Sakuraba should be remembered as the greatest Japanese mixed martial artist ever. というかその選手が攻めるところを見,見たいと思って見に来てると思うのでちゃんと攻撃して攻撃して自分でやって結果負けちゃったっていうことは自分の気持ちを表現できてると思うのであのなんか自分でやったことを自分でもう責任を取る。例えば僕の場合は試合勝って負けてもそれはもう自分で自分の中で全部消化して自分で責任を取るっていうのが侍だと思います。